Every child dreams of growing up and becoming someone important. A doctor, a nurse, a pilot, a teacher. These early imaginations are made more real and attainable when they enter school. In Ghana, the national policy on education says that every child should be enrolled in a school. But the reality is that some children will never have that opportunity. In some of the poorest communities in the country, children miss out on school because they are engaged in economic activities to help their parents. Like Hawini, who will join his older brother in the fields herding cattle. Or Charity, who dropped out of school because her mother couldn't afford it. It is estimated that there are over 500,000 out-of-school children in Ghana, and the reasons cover issues of poverty, cultural mindsets, societal attitudes, and access. In some uh, communities which we describe as underserved, such children do not have schools. Some communities are remote and are cut off by natural barriers like rivers. There is no school infrastructure in these communities forcing children to walk long distances to the nearest school. In many cases, they have to walk beyond three kilometers when they're under eight years of age, and sometimes over five kilometers when they're over eight. Some of the communities are settler communities, in which case they cultivate their crops, and when the land is exhausted, they move from that community to where the land is supposed to be fertile. So when even a school is established in such a community, eventually they will desert that community and the school become abandoned. So it's a problem establishing a permanent structure. It is very difficult to get girls in school. Why? Because we have issues of fosterage. We also have issues of early marriage more female children are given out in fosterage because the practice is normally when the woman is married, the woman comes along with a relative of hers into the marriage home. She is coming to help the woman in household chores. And so this child invariably becomes a foster child. You will find out that there wouldn't be a single house that you would go into and would not get foster children. Ghana's pursuit of education for all started with the 1992 constitution. Universal basic education is trying to provide education to every child of school going age in the country. But the research has shown that no matter the interventions you put into their system, the last 5% of children will need some special interventions for them to be able to go to school. This program was conceived jointly by the government and its development partners and by DFID to bring all children who for some reason have never been to school or have gone to school and dropped out back into the classroom. Even as we try to send the schools as close to the communities as possible, we are also very mindful that the children are growing. Now, they are not going to wait for your policies to be debated and for money to be accessed before they get education. So meanwhile, what do you do? And hence the importance of the complementary basic education. And so complementary basic education was born. Its main features included flexibility of school time to accommodate the chores children were doing for their parents. Our timetable is also uh, flexible. It's three hours. They will go around two o'clock and maybe close at five o'clock. So they can still go back to help their parents in household chores. Its greatest advantage was the ability to provide access to education to remote and underserved communities. Even under a tree, uh, classes can be organized. Each class has an enrollment of 25 learners. And the 25 learners, 13 of them are supposed to be girls and 12 boys. Less than 30% of girls access primary basic education. 
The program strives for gender parity by giving preference to girls. It is the mother tongue that we use to train them. All the materials that we have developed is in the mother tongue. The first cycle has been successful and under the first cycle 24,000 school children have been trained and integrated back into the formal system. The second cycle has begun with uh, the recruitment of about 55,000 and is ongoing. We felt very strongly that comprehensive basic education makes a really big uh, contribution to MDG2 in Ghana. At the moment, uh, Ghana has not met that MDG, but increasing access to primary education is critical to it. Crown agents, in collaboration with Associates for Change and CFBT, were tasked with managing the scale-up of the CBE programme. They constituted a management unit that engaged various partners to implement the programme. The CBE programme is in five regions, and these are Upper East, Upper West, Northern, Brangahafo, and Ashanti region. Ashanti region has only one district, which is uh, Central Front Plains. But in total, we are operating in about 49 districts in those five regions. In Cycle 1, which is the 2013-2014 year, we targeted 25,000 learners. We were able to enroll about 24,117 learners. In cycle two, we targeted 55,000 learners, and we have been able to enroll about 54,500 learners. The plan is by the end of this program, we should have been able to put 200,000 out of school children back into school. We've had a long history of partnership, of uh, cooperation and collaboration. And this is the first time, though, that we considered an actual contribution to a particular program. And given that the CBE program has been doing such excellent work to help close the gap to reach the Millennium Development Goals, we worked with the Ministry of Education, consulted highly with them, consulted highly with the Ghana Education Service to see if this really was a good fit. Looking at the, the fact that the CBE program was going to end, uh, perhaps looking at how can we support the government to better sustain uh, the m management of this to make sure that we can help Ghana bridge the gap to reaching uh, universal primary education. The nine-month cycle of CB events starts with the animation. So we had to do what we call the community animation. It's a sensitization activity to get communities to become aware and appreciate the need for children to be in school one. Second, to see the need to support and allow their children to get enrolled on the CB project. The communities are given real responsibility for the success of the program through the local committee members, ensuring that they really own the program and are invested in its success. These are the real heroes of the CBE program, young men and women who volunteer their time and commitment for the reward of seeing children from their communities given a chance at bettering themselves. Big John teaches a CBE class in the Atebubu district. We and see a Dishania O Krumha Nadindi Lejanya and Juka, Mepes on Subakanka Krana Yatino. Medindi Danso, Mima me Renoir Adrian. Ese unya agane padie na unya apomodi Ese obiara bedi agane a adua wom Once the kids have been trained and integrated they are very happy and 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 armed with a new confidence they have they themselves are motivated enough to stay in school because once they were timid now they are very confident and confidence helps a lot in staying in school they realize that the parents also haven't noticed uh, the difference 
in their children and their children can read, their children can, can write, their children can count. The parents are now also um, very motivated to ensure that their children keep uh, 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 going to school. My the <laughs> As we leave the Awisi community, the children sing a song that reflects the positive attitude they have towards the CBE program. They say, we have done our work, some will praise us, and some will insult us. But bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs>